Hi, everyone. Welcome to Getting Started with Poll Everywhere. I'm just going to give us a few moments here to let everybody get joined and get settled. So we're so happy to have you here with us today. Um, this is one of my uh, favorite sessions that we do here at Poll Everywhere. Um, I absolutely love seeing like what people are able to accomplish coming out of these sessions. So uh, very excited to dive in and get to show you around Poll Everywhere. You know, let me just give just a few more moments here. I want to give everybody a chance to get a, uh, join us, get settled, maybe get some water, get a snack. It is a nice and sunny day here in North Carolina. Hopefully you're having some good weather wherever you're joining us from. Uh, also do want to mention too that my awesome teammate uh, China is here. She's going to be helping me monitor the chat today. So feel free to jump in and say hi to her. Let me just check our account here. I think we are probably about good to get started. So let's go ahead and we will dive in. So my name is Sarah and I'm the product marketing specialist here at Poll Everywhere and I will be your webinar host today. So a large part of my role here is working to help our users create their most engaging presentations and what better tool to do that with than with Poll Everywhere. So if you're like me, then you probably have some presentations coming up. Uh, they might be remote, maybe they're in person or who knows, maybe they're actually hybrid. Uh, well, wherever those are coming from, Poll Everywhere is here to help with that. Uh, now is the perfect time to join us, um, whether you're a longtime Poll Everywhere super user, or maybe you're just starting out and you want to know how it all works. Well, when giving a presentation, how can you know if your participants are really paying attention or not? Have they switched to another tab? Are they checking notifications on their cell phone? Or who knows, maybe they actually have a question or a piece of feedback that could spark major change within your organization. But the only option they have is to message other participants in the chat. Well, that's where Poll Everywhere is here to help you with that. It's designed to empower audience members to engage with the presentation material by participating in interactive activities. So as a presenter, not only does Poll Everywhere help give you a break in between slides, but it also helps you get that valuable input that can help you steer the direction of your session and make long-term decisions that affect your organization as a whole. So the goal of today's session is going to be to show you around Poll Everywhere, introduce you to some of the different, the different activity types that we have available to you, uh, share some, and share some advice so you can get the most out of your presenter experience. Now, uh, before I dive into our agenda and some background information on us, I do want to mention that today's session is exciting because we will be presenting this with our new uh, visual activity designs. Uh, so this whole visual redesign was part of an ongoing initiative to modernize the look and feel of our activities. Uh, very happy to say that these are now launched and available now. Uh, so what you will be seeing me demo today is what you will experience on your end as well. Um, so what can you expect to see from these new designs? Well, first and foremost, uh, anybody who might have used Pulverware before, uh, the first thing you might notice is, uh, yeah, we've got a QR code at the top. Yes, you heard me right. That is a QR code at the top. Uh, so this has been a long requested item and it is now here. So every activity will now by default have a joining QR code at the top. So it's easier for your participants to join and answer your polls. Um, I also want to mention that with this redesign, we did make a few accessibility updates as well. Uh, the most no noteworthy improvement is that in clickable image activities, we now have correctness showing as check marks and X's no longer solely relying on the color of the pin markers to indicate correctness. Um, also important for, for me to note that these changes, changes are all visual. If you've used Poll Everywhere in the past, uh, no worries. All the main functionalities are still there. Uh, now they just look a little bit cleaner and more modern. So very excited to announce this to you all. Let's go ahead. Uh, with that, we'll go ahead and dive in and we'll talk about some background information on Poll Everywhere. So here's a brief introduction about us. Uh, so though we were founded in San Francisco, as of last year, we are an entirely remotely distributed team. So Poll Everywhere was founded in 2008 and has been continuously self-funded since its founding. At least 500,000 educators and 75% of Fortune 500 companies have used Poll Everywhere to enhance their presentations and engage audiences. So to say that we have grown since our founding is quite an understatement. Um, helping presenters get the most out of their presentation is our goal. So I do hope you're as excited as I am for what is still to come. So with that, let's dive into our agenda for today. Uh, so today we are going to be covering the basics. We're going to be talking about creating activities, customizing them to fit your unique presentation goals, inserting them into your slide decks, and collecting responses. Um, we'll also be taking some time to go over the resources that we have available to you, and we will also be answering any questions that you might have. 
At the end of today's session, we will be holding an interactive Q&A session to go over any of those questions that might come up during the demo. Um, throughout the session, I will be demoing activities that you all can actually participate in. Uh, so to do that, just go ahead and head over to pollev.com slash webinar. And there you're going to be able to see your responses in action. Uh, this is also going to be a great way for you to get a taste of what your participants will see and experience when you have your own Poll Everywhere presentation. Um, also want to mention too that today's session will be recorded and after it's over, we will be sharing a link to the recording along with some helpful resources. Um, most likely that email will be coming through tomorrow. So don't worry if you don't see that come through today. Um, yeah, just most likely it'll be coming through tomorrow. Um, and as I mentioned too, we will be doing a Q&A at the end of today's session. I do wanna encourage you all to drop any questions you might have in the pinned Q&A. To access that pinned Q&A, all you need to do is go to pollev.com slash webinar and there you're gonna see the, uh, the pinned Q&A on the second tab. So it'll say any questions. So at any point during the demo, if you have a question that comes up, please feel free to go to that pollev.com slash webinar. Uh, click on that second tab, it says any questions, drop your question in there. And all those questions will load up for me at the end so we can uh, make sure we get those questions answered. With that, that was a lot of information. Let's go ahead and do a quick uh, warm up activity so I can get to know you all. In one word, I would love to know how will you be using Poll Everywhere? How, how are you planning on using Poll Everywhere? So I'll give a few moments here to get your answers in. I see some answers coming in, that's awesome. And again, to answer this, you're gonna to go to pollev.com slash webinar and there you should be able to put in your response. Now this is called a word cloud activity. This is one of my favorite activity types. Um, just really for the reason we're seeing here, it's so visual. So as you can see, um, all these different responses are coming in. And actually I'm so happy this happened too. Um, so you can see here meetings got really big and so did engagement. You might be wondering, well, why did that grow in size and not some of these other um, responses? That's because multiple people, excuse me, multiple people put in the response meeting or engagement or polling. Um, so as you get all these multiple responses coming in, you see them changing color and growing in size. So this is such a great way to kind of see what the room as a whole is kind of here for. Um, you know, it, it's just a really cool way to see all of your feedback in one really easy to read map. Um, and you might be wondering too, I'll go over this again, what we're going to talk about how to create this activity type for yourself. Um, but you might be wondering, why did I start this with in one word? Uh, reason being is we do typically recommend to uh, phrase your questions like that. So that way it encourages participants to only input one word responses. Now you can get around that by having your participants put in um, dashes or uh, underscores in between their answers if they absolutely have to have multiple word answers. Um, but we just typically recommend one word responses because as you can see here, it's really nice and easy to read, um, just makes it a little bit cleaner. Um, but yeah, like I said, totally, there are some workarounds too to, uh, if you need to absolutely have um, multiple word responses. So let me look, take a look at our feedback here that we got. So I've seen, yeah, same polling, uh, meetings, engagement, absolutely. Um, yeah, even though I can't see you all or hear you all, I, I am hearing you all through your responses here. I'm able to engage with you all and you all are able to engage with me by answering this activity. So it definitely changes up presentations and just makes them more fun um, and love all these colors. And this is a new change too with this new redesign that I just mentioned. So we used to have our responses, they would go either horizontal or vertical. Now they're all horizontal, so much easier to read. Um, one fun thing I too, do want to mention too, you can put emojis responses in this as well. So that's another fun option. Um, now, depending on your plan, we do have some moderation. If you don't want emojis, um, you can turn that off as well. Um, but yeah, th and thanks. Yep. Somebody just put in a little smiley face. That's awesome with some sunglasses. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. So those make it more fun too, um, along with the colors. So yeah, th thank you all. That's awesome. Perfect. All right. Well, with that, let's go ahead. We're going to jump over to our uh, poll everywhere dashboard. I want to walk you all through that process. Um, so let's go ahead and jump over there. So I've got my poll everywhere home dashboard pulled up. So when you log into your poll everywhere account, um, this is the first page you're going to see. This is your home dashboard. So here, this one thing I really want to note when you first log in. So again, this is your home dashboard. So how I had you all answer my activities was this custom URL that I have here. So that's my activity response URL. So you're going to be able to see your activity response URL when you go to your home dashboard on the poll everywhere on your poll everywhere account. Now, depending on your plan, you might be able to customize this URL as well. 
Um, but just know that this is the main thing you need to know um, of how you are going to get your participants to be able to answer your activities. And um, every every person who has a Poll Everywhere account, you do get your own um, unique URL. So that will display here when you log into your home dashboard. Now, um, let's go where the magic happens. So I do want to take us over to our activities dashboard. And I get there by clicking on this little bar column icon here. And now I'm on my activities dashboard. So my activities dashboard is where I, you can create, organize and arrange your activities in whichever way makes most sense to you. Now you'll see here, I've left two different views unstructured, or excuse me, two, two, two different views here. Um, so here's our activities that are organized into folders. We do offer folders if you wanna um, maybe group your activities by certain categories, or you can also, as you create activities, they'll just populate down here. So you can totally leave your view in the folders view or leave it more unstructured. I wanted to make sure I had both here so you all get a kind of an idea of what both look like. Um, personally, I do prefer the folder method. I just think it's a little bit easier to find your activities. But again, it's totally customizable. That is completely up to you uh, how you want to organize your activities. So because I love folders, I'm going to jump into our webinars folder here. And I'm gonna go ahead and create a folder with today's date. So today is August 31st, 2023. And as you can see, I really do like my folders here. <laughs> so there's our warm up activity. That's my pinned q and I'm gonna go ahead and move these into that August 31st folder. Uh, the pinned q and wanted to hang out there. There we go, we got a bit there. Um, perfect, so let's jump into that folder. So, and sorry, I probably went through that a little quick. So to create a folder, you're gonna click on this folder icon here and uh, you can name it whatever you'd like. And um, that's, yeah, it's pretty, it's pretty straightforward to create your folder. Um, now, because I went into my multiples of fo folders here, um, because I when I go to create an activity, I'm already clicked into this August 31st, 20, um, 2023 folder. So if I create an activity here, it's gonna populate in here. So let me go back to that main activities page. If I were to create an activity right now, not clicked into any folders, it's just gonna populate down here. Just wanted to make sure I explained that real quick because I know, like I said, I love my folders. So I'm, I'm diving into a lot of folders here. So I just want to make sure I walked through that. All right, perfect. Well, with that, let's go ahead and start talking about creating activities. So to create your activity, you're going to click on this button, uh, this blue button with the plus sign and the word activity. So let's go ahead and click on that. And now I am in my activity creator tool. And here's where your options are endless. So here you're gonna see a bunch of different activity types that are available. And actually, if you click on this more tab, we have even more. We have a ton of activity types to help you get started. Um, these are all so much fun. Um, I'm not gonna be able to go through all of these today, but I will go through um, primarily our, our most popular activity types. Uh, so don't worry, we will we will talk through those. But yeah, just know, um, don't forget about that more tab. There's definitely a lot under here. Um, lots of good stuff. So, and I'll talk more in detail about each of these activity types, but first, uh, because I like to customize these sessions, I would love to know what types of activities, see if I can type activities, there we go, <laughs> would you like to see in today's demo? Now, this is our multiple choice activity. So um, actually make sure I'm on there. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> this is our multiple choice activity. Um, so this is probably our most popular activity type. Um, again, I'll go through this in a little bit more detail too, um, but really just want to get a kind of sense of what activity types y'all are excited about. Um, but let me go ahead and add my options here. So here in my title, I've gone ahead and uh, typed in my question. So what type of activities would you all like to see in today's demo? So let's put in our options here. So I've got word cloud which we just did, but we're gonna go over in a little bit deeper detail as well. We've got Q&A, got ranking. And I need a few more options here. So to add more options, I'm gonna click on this add option button here. All right, so we've got ranking, clickable image. And last but not least, we've got open-ended. Perfect. Now, before I switch over and demonstrate this activity live, I do want to mention a couple of fun options we have here, too. So you'll see this little image icon at the top, um, both in the title and also in the answer option. So if you wanted, you could actually have an image as the, the, the title or the answer options, like lots of different options there to really customize your activity. Um, that's that's totally an option for you. Um, also, you'll see these check marks here too. I'm not sure if we have any educators in the building with us today, um, but just so you um, to note for you all. So 
Um, this check mark here, this indicates correctness. So let's say you're giving your students a pop quiz, or if you're doing corporate training, perhaps, and you're giving a pop quiz, um, you can click on this answer option here, and that would indicate that this answer word cloud is correct. So to indicate the correct answer, I'm going to click on that checkbox and see how it highlights green. That would mean word cloud is the correct answer here. Now, obviously, we don't have any right or wrong answers with this specific question, but just wanted to make sure I made a note of that. Also, too, when you're editing your options, and if you accidentally add an additional option you don't need, just click this little trash bin icon and it goes away. Um, very, very easy and straightforward. Um, one other time, too. So because I created this activity in my August 31st folder, any of the activities I create while in here is going to be nice and organized in that folder. So just wanted to make sure I made a note of that. So I'd love to know what kind of activities you all are excited about seeing today. So we will talk about this view as well. Um, but again, I love to customize these, excuse me, customize these ses sessions. So I want to see uh, which activity types y'all are most excited about. And I see we're getting some answers in. That's awesome. And again, to answer this, you'll go to that polyv.com slash webinar. Now, I mentioned you can find that URL on your home dashboard, but it will always be up here um, for you available, too. And we've got our awesome new QR code, too. So your participants can scan that with their phone and easily answer the activity. And I'll talk about all these controls here. Um, don't worry, I'll give you the full the full scope of everything. Again, just really want to get a kind of a better idea of which activity types y'all are most excited about. Um, that kind of helps me understand which maybe which activity types to spend a little bit more time on. But we will talk about all of these. So and it looks like clickable image is popular. Don't blame you all. That's one of my favorite types. It's so interactive. It's and it's just so customizable. Um, and it really changes up your presentations too. You know, after you have a lot of text and copy, it's nice to have an image here and there that your participants can interact with. Perfect. I'm going to just give a few more moments here. All right, perfect. Yeah, these are great. Yeah, it looks like clickable image and oh, it looks like ranking actually uh, went up there. That's awesome. Yeah, ranking is a great one too. It's really great for reaching consensus. Um, now, when I go through all of these, I will give some sample use cases as well. Um, I'll, I'll you know kind of talk about each one and kind of what their best benefits are. Um, but yeah, we'll we'll go through each one of these. All right, perfect. Well, it looks like ranking is winning today. So that's awesome. Clickable image in second place. Um, but as I said, we will go through all of these. Um, but yeah, it's good to know that you all are excited about ranking. And hopefully this gives you a good idea too. So that this is, again, I'm able, I can't see you all, I can't hear you all, but I'm able to ask your opinion on something and we're able to customize today's session to, to this particular group. So, so many, so many awesome uses with Poll Everywhere. So let's jump back into our activity creator tool. Now I am gonna go down the line. So we talked about multiple choice already a little bit, but let's let's go ahead and talk about Word Cloud. Um, so uh, as I said, so that, this is what we demonstrated in the beginning. That was a Word Cloud activity. Um, let's go ahead and make another so you can kind of see what the setup process looks like. Um, so I would love to know, and this is gonna sound like a really basic question, but bear with me. Okay, so in one word, what is your favorite color? And again, I know that sounds like a basic question, but I promise you every time I've asked this question, I learn a new color that I've never heard of. <laughs> so very cool. Um, so that'll be our question for today. And again, you'll see that I phrase that is in one word. And that's just because ideally I would like to get um, one word responses just so it's a little bit easier to read. Now, um, you'll, you've seen me jump back and forth between our activities dashboard and the activity creator tool. If you know you have a set of activities that you're creating, you do not have to jump back and forth. I'm in my August 31st folder. I've created my word cloud. I need to create another activity. So I'm gonna click this button here, add another activity, okay? So now um, that is already in my folder, it's good to go. I can keep going down the line and making all my different activities. If I know I'm making a multiple set of activities, I can do that all well in the activity creator tool. You do not have to jump back and forth. So really great option there. Um, so let's go ahead and talk about Q&A. So remember those situations that I mentioned in the beginning where you open up the floor for questions and you're just met with crickets. <laughs> Nobody likes that situation. I'm sure we've all been there. Um, but well, that's where Q&A has come to the rescue. This is the perfect activity type for you. Um, so with Q&As, all you need to do is pose a broad question like ask me anything and watch the results pour in. So during that time, the audience will also be able to upvote or downvote each other's responses, which is perfect for reaching a consensus. Uh, one of my favorite things about Q&A activities, too, is that these can actually be pinned during your presentation. I mentioned in the beginning that we do have a pinned Q&A um, on the other second tab of the polyv.com slash webinar. That is a pinned Q&A. 
Um, so that's a really, really great option to have um, just up during your presentation. Um, I'll quickly, I will show you all how to set up a pinned Q&A before we jump over uh, to the PowerPoint view a little bit later on. I don't want to jump too much right now, but I will show that how to set that up. Um, I do want to mention that is a premium feature, but it is such a great option uh, to have. It's also can be left up after your presentation is done. So if you have a slide deck that you're going through, you can leave that pinned Q&A up if you want to leave the session open for people to put follow-up questions. So um, one of our asynchronous options, so really, really great option there. With that, let's go ahead and um, type in our question for our Q&A. So I would love to know, what are you most looking forward to next week? Perfect. Hope you all have some fun plans coming up. Perfect. And again, I will go, we're actually going to present these two. I'm just kind of walking through the setup of all of these so that way you all can kind of get an idea of what the setup looks like first. I don't like to jump back and forth too much. So let's go ahead and add another activity. I'm going to jump over to my clickable image. Now I saw that this was, this came in second with that poll that I did. Uh, so let's talk about clickable images. So this is one of my favorite activity types just because of how customizable it is. So you'll see here, we already have some templates available for you uh, to get started, um, but you can also use your own image. So I have an image prepared for us today. So I'm going to go ahead and click that. All right, so I click upload my own image. I've got my image here. Let's go ahead and type in my question. I would love to know. This is a little bit of a silly question, but hey, we got to learn. We got to have some fun at the same time. So <laughs> I love to know, do you prefer sweet snacks, salty snacks, or both? Perfect. Now, I could totally leave this. I could create this and leave this unstructured if I want, but we've got a few more options here with clickable image. Now, because my specific image has some different regions that I created, I want to create some different answer regions. So what I mean by that, I'm going to click into sweet snacks here and you can see this little box that's labeled A just populated. This is my answer region. So what this is going to do is anybody who clicks, any of my participants who click into this box here, it's going to tally up the amount of responses I get for sweet snacks. Now, again, this is totally optional. You do not have to do this. I just like to show both of you so you know that you have that option there. Um, you'll notice too that I did not drag the region box uh, all the way to the corner. It depends on the image, but sometimes it can get cut off if you drag it way to the edge of the image. So that's why I dragged it to just here. Um, you'll see what I mean when I present it. But just let's go ahead and demonstrate uh, creating that region again. So I clicked into the both category here. I'm going to easily drag and drop my region. Perfect. Now I'm going to create my salty snacks region. Drag and drop my answer region there. Perfect. Now, um, as I created this, it's labeled in region one, two, and three. I, you can customize this. So let's go ahead and do that. So we've got our sweet snacks region. We've got our both region. And we've got our salty snacks region. So now um, these answer boxes, again, these will tally up all the answers that I get in each of these categories for me. So really great option. Again, you can totally, you do not have to do these regions too. If you just want to leave it unstructured, that's also an option as well. Um, you'll notice here too, you'll see this little checkbox. Uh, so that is a correctness feature. Um, so if you're doing a quiz or maybe if you're doing some training, um, in, anything like that, uh, you can um, actually make an answer correct if you want. So to, to indicate a correct answer, you're just going to click on that checkbox, kind of similar how we did with multiple choice. And this would be the correct answer in this, um, in this case. However, again, we don't have any correct or wrong or right answers here. Uh, so I'm not going to indicate that as correct, but just wanted to make sure I made a note of that. Now, if you accidentally created an additional region um, and you just use this little trash bin icon to make sure you just get rid of that. So very straightforward there. Um, so that's clickable image. And again, we will actually demonstrate all of these live. Uh, I just want to kind of show you through the setup process. So let's keep going along. So we're going to add another activity. Now let's talk about surveys. So um, I can't, unfortunately, I don't have enough time to live demo surveys and competitions uh, just because they do take a little bit of time to both set up and demo. Um, but uh, what I will do is give you, give you all a quick overview of both of these activity types. Um, so for surveys, surveys are amazing because they can be taken at any time. They're the perfect uh, solution for follow-up questions after a live presentation. 
Um, so I did mention earlier in the session, I will be sending out an email uh, with the, that will include today's recording that will most likely be coming through tomorrow. Um, but that email will actually include a survey. So you will get a little bit of a view of what surveys look, at least from the participant view. Um, so definitely, please let, do um, fill up that survey once the session's over. Uh, let me know how I did. If there's something that you wanted to see that, that wasn't demoed, please uh, let us know. Um, we love hearing your feedback. So competitions, let's talk about competitions. So competitions are a series of multiple choice activities with added elements like timers and leaderboards. These are a great way to finish out sessions with a recap on what the group just learned, or maybe even just have some fun trivia. Um, so lots of fun options with competition. Um, with our new visual redesign, um, we, we definitely changed the colors around, excuse me, colors around a little bit. Um, we've got this really uh, fun, vibrant purple. And uh, whoever is the winner at the end of competitions gets this fun little confetti parade. I absolutely <laughs> love it. It's very visual, very fun, um, and very uh, just engaging. So definitely recommend that you check out competitions. Um, and I will provide some resources at the end of today's session of how you can get some support articles on each of these activity types too. Provides a little just extra detail on top of the what we uh, talk about in the session. So let's talk about open-ended questions. So Open-ended questions work a lot like Q&A activities, uh, but they do not have the upvote or downvote feature. Um, so these are abs these are my absolute favorite activity types for running brainstorming sessions. Uh, you can also use these to kind of gauge audience opinions on a specific topic um, and just really for gathering live feedback from your participants. So let's ask the question for let's <laughs> words. Let's go ahead and ask, what does audience engagement mean to you? Perfect. I'm making sure I didn't have any typos there. I think we're good. Um, so again, these are so great for just brainstorming. And when I actually demo these, I'll talk a little bit more about use cases too. Um, but yeah, highly recommend these for brainstorming. Absolutely love these. I think they're just really, really great. Let's go ahead and we'll talk about our last activity type, the most popular activity type too. I, I believe that one run, um, won in the multiple cho choice poll. So let's talk about rankings. Now you'll see here, I did have to click on that more tab to be able to access ranking. It is in this uh, bottom ribbon down here. Um, and again, highly recommend you all check out these uh, different activity types too. We've got a lot of different options to help get you started. But let's go, let's talk about uh, rankings. So rankings are fantastic because they can help you get a better idea of your participants' preferences. So you can enter in the prompt and enter your available options and then see how your audience ranks each item. Now, another thing I wanna note about ranking, one thing that I love, this is one of our only activity types that can be taken asynchronously. So this survey and pinned Q and A's are some of the only activity types that can be asynchronous. So you can actually email out rankings. Um, very, very cool option. Um, I've seen people use it, like if there's going to be a company outing and you're trying to decide what restaurant to go to, I've seen um, that's, you know, that's probably more of a fun option, but uh, maybe you're trying to decide what topics do you want to focus on on this next quarter's campaign. Um, so many different options for rankings, but let's go ahead. We're going to ask a fun question for rankings. And again, I said, we're, we're learning a lot today, but we're also going to have fun while we're learning. So <laughs> I would love for you all to rank your favorite beverages. Okay, so let's go to enter our options. So we've got hot coffee. We've got iced coffee. I know you all probably have some busy schedules, so I'm sure you're probably getting some coffee or tea to help help keep the day going. So <laughs> um, we've got hot tea. So I know not everybody's a coffee person. I like both hot tea and hot coffee. So and iced coffee. Um, we've got iced tea. And we've got last but not least hot chocolate. Perfect. Excited to see your all's responses on this. Um, and I know those pumpkin uh, lattes just started coming out in the coffee shops. My favorite time of year. Absolutely love those drinks. So <laughs> we'll actually um, go ahead and demo these live too. Um, but perfect. So now we have created all of our activity types all within the create, um, activity creator tool. So let's go ahead and click the create button. I've got all my activity types done. Now I am going to jump back over to my activities dashboard. Now you can see I created all of these in my August 31st folder or while well clicked into here. So now they have all populated for me down here. So perfect. Let's go ahead and we'll jump in. Now, before I demo these, let's go ahead and talk about this view here. So this is your activity page. Uh, so this is going to be your page before you go to present. Um, but there's a lot of different options on here. So we're going to walk through them all. Don't worry. <laughs> I know it might look like there's just a lot of buttons and different things, but we'll, let's go ahead and walk through them all. 
So I'm going to start at the top here. Let's talk about visual settings. So uh, this is where you're going to be able to customize the look and feel of your activities. Uh, the visual settings section has all the tools you need. So I'm not going to click into all these just because, again, I want to be mindful of time. Um, but as you can see, here's a lot of different options. You could add a uh, background image here if you want to like have a fun. I know fall's coming up. Maybe you want to have some fall leaves in the back or something. Um, you've got that option. You can change the fonts, the colors. Uh, sizes of things, um, all kinds of different options here. So we've got lots of fun options. And um, with our new visual activity redesign, we also have this fun modern theme, which is this fun uh, blue purple gradient background. So if you want to try that out, you can as well. I'm going to switch back over to our classic just so we stay consistent. I want to make sure I'm using the view that's going to be default for you all. Um, but yeah, lots of different options there. So that's all in your visual setting, which you access just by clicking this here. And then this panel pops up for you. And click done and that makes that panel pop or go away for me. Now um, let's talk about this activate button. So what does activating an activity mean? Activating your activity means you are making it live and you're making it the poll able to start receiving participant responses. So to make your activity live, you want to click that act activate button. Now something else to note too. There are two ways to activate your activity. You can either click this activate button here. I could click this and this would be live for you all to respond. Or I could click present, and this will take me into full screen mode on the browser. Um, and that will also automatically activate my activity. Now, today's session, we are going to be doing um, a PowerPoint present a demo real quick, too. So I'll show you and kind of talk about activation while we're on there as well. And um, also Google Slides. I started out on Google Slides. We'll talk about that as well. But all you really need to know for now is activating your activity makes it live for, for you to start um, collecting responses. Now, if you click on this activate button, you're going to see it's activated. Click on that deactivate if you want to kind of take it down, um, make, not make it live again. So activate and deactivate. Now let's talk about the configure panel panel here. Um, so this is where you can choose uh, who can respond uh, to your activity, um, how they respond. Um, and also depending on your plan, you also might have the option of doing moderation as well. Um, so as I mentioned earlier, um, we do allow, emo allow emojis, but um, depending on your plan, if you have moderation available, if you don't want emojis, um, then you can also uh, filter that as well. And we've got some other moderation options there. Um, so just check your plan to see if that is available to you. Um, but basically what you need to know about the configure panel is this is really where you're going to control um, like the things like the timer, how people can respond, who can respond, all that, all that good stuff. So all that is there for you. Now I'm going to jump down to here. So you might have seen this pop up too, and I'll, I'll kind of talk about that. But this is this bar down here. This is our presentation controls bar. So um, the first option you're going to see here, this is going to be your activity navigation, your slide navigation. So this allows me to switch back and forth. I'm in that same activity set. So it just allows me to toggle between all the different activities that we created. So you've got these uh, left and right uh, carrots here to help you toggle back and forth. Um, then we've got this little uh, lock button. So this, this is our lock and unlock control. So what this will do, um, I just talked about act activating your activity. So activating your activity makes it live uh, for your participants. Now, if you deactivate it, and I'm sure you all can see that screen right now, there's no activity that's live, so you can't answer. Well, maybe you want to have the activity up. You want to you want people to be able to see the responses, but you don't want to have people putting in responses anymore. That's where this button's going to help you. So let's say I've gone ahead and presented this question. I collected your responses, but now I want to um, get with the group and let's talk about what we just presented. So if I don't want any more responses coming in, I'm going to click on this button here. Now my activity is locked. So if I had it activated, it's still live. My participants can still see it, but they can not, no longer put in, in excuse me, put in any more responses. So to unlock my activity, I'm just going to click on that button again. Now my activity is unlocked. I can start collecting responses again. So really great option for uh, when you're discussing certain topics. If you just kind of want to, you know, take a pause for a second, um, that option is there for you. Now, um, same kind of a similar use case here. So let's say you want to you want to have the activity live, you want to have responses coming in, but maybe you don't want your participants to be influenced by the other responses that are coming in. Well, that's why we have put this option here. So you can toggle between the instructions and responses here. 
So if I had my activity live, it's collecting responses, but I don't want my participants to see the responses, I can toggle over to the instruction view. And that will just show um, how to join the activity. It won't show the responses coming in. But then when I'm ready to show the responses, just toggle right over to responses. Now you will notice, I'll show, I'll kind of point it out when we go in clickable image, but some of the activity types, uh, and depending if they have correctness indicated, sometimes there will be some additional options here. So just, um, yeah, don't worry if you see some additional options. It just kind of depends on the activity type you're presenting and uh, whether or not you have correctness indicated. Last but not least, let's talk about the clear responses button. Um, it does just what it says. So let's say I'm finished with my presentation and I kind of just want to reuse this presentation over or this activity over. Um, I can just clear my responses and start fresh. Um, so we've got that option for you as well. So perfect. Let's go ahead and we're going to demo some of these live. I know we mentioned, I mentioned we're going to actually demo these. So let's go ahead and activate our activity. And remember, I mentioned that there's two ways of doing that. So I can either click activate or when I'm in the web browser, I can click present. That is going to take me to full screen. And now you all should be able to answer the activity. Now, this is presenting from the web browser. Um, but again, we'll, we'll kind of go over what this looks like for um, PowerPoint as well. And I'll do a quick overview of Google, Google Slides as well. All right, perfect. Now I'm seeing responses come in. This is awesome. This is great. And again, so I mentioned that in one word. So um, I do recommend that you phrase your questions like that. It's just going to make your word clouds a little bit easier to read. Um, so we talked, we just talked about this presenter controls bar. Now, when you're presenting in full screen on the web browser, um, you can see here that if I toggle my mouse down here, that presenter controls bar does become available for me. Now it disappears when I no longer need it, but if I need it again, just toggle your mouse down there and no worries. You've got all this control still available for you. I'm seeing a periwinkle. So my favorite color is lavender. So I, that's pretty similar to periwinkles. So that's awesome. Lo love to see some more uh, people who like purple <laughs> and I actually see purple too. Aquamarine. So that's fun. That's fun. I love that color. And ultramarine. I have not heard of ultramarine before. See, so, so there you go. I, every time I ask this question, I, I learned a new color that I've never heard of. So <laughs> Now, these are great, too. So I use this as an icebreaker today. Now, if you're opening your session and you kind of want to, um, you know, get your participants used to using Polarware, this is a great option for your icebreaker just to kind of get them used to um, how to use Polarware. This is a great starter option for that. Perfect. Well, these are awesome. I'm just checking my time here. I do want to make sure I leave plenty of time for our Q&A. So I am going to go ahead and switch over to our next activity type. I'm going to demo about two or three activity types here, and then I'll do uh, the remainder of our activities in PowerPoint so you all can see how it looks on PowerPoint. But I would love to know, what are you most looking forward to next week? Oh, a seafood boil. That's fun. Now, this is our Q&A. Now, we will we'll be demoing this a little bit at the end, too. We'll actually be doing a QA, and a um, but just wanted to make sure I demoed it here on the web browser. So as you can see here, so the cool thing about Q&A, we've got all these responses coming in. So we have this upvote and downvote feature. Yeah, thank you to whoever just uh, upvoted that. So SEC football, yes, I love college football. Very excited for me coming back this week. Um, so you've got these fun upvotes and downvotes. Um, so this can kind of help you. So if you've got a Q&A, you can kind of see um, what's the most popular responses. So if you're actually going through a set of questions, this will kind of help get you, give you an idea of what is the audience most interested in based on the responses that have been submitted. Now, another thing I want to note too, so you can click on this little star. Let's say we're going through our responses here. I click on that little star and I'll demonstrate it again. Click on that star. This is our spotlight view. So let's say you have this up on a big screen um, in a room, or if you're just presenting like this too, this makes this nice and easy to read for everybody. Not working on Monday. Love that. Um, enjoy your day off. That's awesome. But um, so if you're going through your different responses, you're in spotlight view. You don't have to jump back and forth. Now you can, that's an option, but you can stay in spotlight view and click this little carrot here. And I can scroll through all my answers here. So this is a really great option just to make it a little bit easier for everybody to see um, and just help you get through all your responses. Another thing I want to note too while we're here, I'm going to see, usually I get a double response. That's okay. I'm just going to pick, I'm just going to pick a response. Um, so let's say this is an actual Q&A session. And let's say somebody's asked the same question a couple of times. Um, so if let's say this was a duplicate question, I've already answered this. If I've already answered this, I can go ahead and click on this check mark and that removes that um, that answer from or excuse me, question from uh, the lineup. 
Now, as you can see here too, these responses don't just disappear into oblivion. Um, I know there's a lot of responses coming in. Um, if you're looking through and you're not in that spotlight view, you can just scroll on your mouse and um, see all the responses here. Same thing if you're in presenting in Google Slides or PowerPoint, just scroll through and uh, they'll all be there for you. They don't disappear. So, wow, these are some fun plans. This is awesome. I hope you all have some good plans next or good good times next week. Um, I'm seeing some travel, safe travels so who are traveling. And uh, anybody's watching sports, good luck to your teams. Um, yeah, I'll be watching some college football as well <laughs> this weekend. So, and uh, I hope you enjoy your day off as well. I already mentioned that, but uh, you know, yeah, that's awesome. So. <laughs> Perfect. Well, with that, let's go ahead. We'll do one more activity on the browser, and then I will do my last two activities on PowerPoint. And I'll kind of show you all how to uh, demonstrate uh, how to insert activities in PowerPoint and also presenting in PowerPoint. Perfect. So this is my clickable image. Now you'll see here, and I probably still dragged a little bit too high, but um, but we can still see the numbers. So it's, it's okay. It's okay. But see where I created my regions here. It's tallying up all the responses here. So this is awesome. So I'm loving seeing these responses. And again, if I need my pre presenter, presenter control bar, it's all down here for me. Just got to toggle my mouse down here. Now in the salty snacks region, I put movie popcorn because I have one rule when I go to the movie movie theaters and that's I am not sharing my movie popcorn. <laughs> not changing that rule. Um, that's just how it is. So, <laughs> But I love all these categories. Honestly, I'd probably be in the both category if I'm being honest. All right, perfect. So you can see all these markers of pulling up here. So these are all the pin markers. So these are where all of you all have gone in and clicked your responses. Now, um, let's talk about some use cases for clickable image. So I've seen people use clickable image in the beginning of a session. Maybe they're trying to see, let's, let's say it's like a conference and they're trying to see where everybody in the room is from. We've got a world map um, that, uh, template that you can use, or you, if you're maybe want to do it like a specific state or specific, specific region, you can also upload your own image of a map, maybe see where everybody's coming from and joining from. Um, I've actually seen people use clickable image for um, continued education and corporate training. There's a lot of different uses for clickable image. And um, don't forget too, so and um, you can actually indicate correctness. So if you are using this for corporate training or some kind of continued education course, you can set correctness. So um, lots of different use cases there for a clickable image. And it's so visual too. It just kind of adds a visual element um, in between all of the text and copy in your slide. So Really, really love this. Um, and as I mentioned earlier, uh, when I demoed, when I said I demo um, clickable image, there's going to be some other options. So um, I'm going to click on my options here. So if I were actually having having this as a um, pop quiz or something like that, this is where it's going to give me that option to kind of go through. So if I don't want everybody to see um, all the responses that have come in, I can click on image. So kind of similar to the instructions view, just called image for clickable image. If I do want to want people to see the responses, I click on responses. If I had correctness indicated, I click on my regions or, or if I just want to show how many I got in each category, um, that'll show me that up there. And again, don't forget, this is why I did not drag that answer region up to the top. It definitely depends on your image, but I just typically recommend just go a little bit below so that way your numbers don't get cut off there. Perfect. Well, I think these were some great responses. Thank you all so much for participating in this. We've got 41 responses. Awesome. And I should have mentioned that earlier, but yeah, you can see here, I've got that indicated in my visual settings where I um, have a counter showing me how many uh, responses we got for this activity. So that's awesome. Perfect. With that, I want to make sure we leave enough time for both PowerPoint and our Q&A. So I am going to go ahead and jump over to my PowerPoint view. So let's go ahead. I've got my PowerPoint slideshow pulled up. So let's talk about PowerPoint. And actually, you know what? I just remember, I totally forgot. I, I told you I'm going to uh, talk about pin Q&A. Let me do that first. I don't want to jump back and forth too, too much. So apologies there. I want to make sure I, I do all my instructions here in the, um, the browser first, and then I'll go over to PowerPoint. That way I'm not switching back and forth too much. Um, I did talk about setting up a pinned Q&A. So I just clicked on my activities dashboard. Um, again, this is a premium feature, but this is absolutely one of my favorite features that we offer is the pinned Q&A. And this is where you're going to be um, dropping in your questions. So again, feel free to drop, drop any questions in that pinned Q&A. But to set up a pinned Q&A, when you go to your activities dashboard, you're just going to go to set, um, to here. You'll see pinned activity up here. You see settings. So you're going to go into your settings. Now here is where I would click in and I would select the Q&A that I want to pin. So I already have mine selected, so I'm not gonna change that, but you select that. Very important, do not forget, I actually do this sometimes too, so I'm, I'm guilty of it too, but do not forget when you've selected your Q&A that you wanna pin, 
scroll all the way down here and click save. So I'm going to click save. So that will make sure you've got the correct um, pinned Q&A or Q&A pinned. So just wanted to walk through that really quick. Sorry, I jumped back and forth a little bit between their PowerPoint, but um, totally forgot. I was going to do that demo real quick. I wanted to make sure I showed you all that. because I, I just love that feature. It's it's so cool. All right. So with that, now let's jump over to PowerPoint. <laughs> all right. Perfect. And I'm going to stay in PowerPoint. I'm not going to jump back and forth again. Um, I'll, I'll jump over to, to Google Slides at the end, but we'll, we'll stay in PowerPoint for a little while. So perfect. Now. So you've seen how Paul Everywhere works online, but how does it integrate with your presentations and slideware? Well, Poll Everywhere works where you work. So you can add Poll Everywhere activities to PowerPoint, Keynote, Google Slides. Um, but today we are going to do uh, PowerPoint and a little bit of Google Slides as our demonstration. So, But let's talk about PowerPoint for a little bit here. Now, um, something important to note, I am using a Mac. So this is going to look slightly different for any of you here that are using Windows, but don't worry, I will explain how it works for you all as well. Oh, excuse me. Um, so when I am using a uh, Mac with Power Pull Everywhere for PowerPoint, oh my goodness, words again. <laughs> I'm using a Mac. So with that, with using our PowerPoint integration, I have this uh, Pull Everywhere um, app installed, and I'll give you all the information of where to find that app and all that good stuff. Um, but all I, all you need to know, so if you're using a Mac, you're going to have this app installed. And as you can see here, I'm logged in to my uh, Poll Everywhere account. So I'm going to jump in. As you can see, all of our folders and activities are here. So when you first log into here, it's going to take you kind of the same view as that activities dashboard view. Um, but when you first log into this app, this is what it's going to look like. But let's jump over. I want to go ahead and demonstrate... Um, inserting our activities. I know there's a couple activity types we haven't um, done yet. So, oops, I think I clicked on the wrong one. Yep. Let's click over the right one. August 31st. Perfect. Um, so uh, you're, if I'm getting ready to insert my activity slides, I've got my folder open up. I know which activities I want to insert. I'm going to go ahead and go down to the slide that I want them inserted after. So you'll see that app disappeared, but don't worry, it will come back. Just click on it again. And there it goes. It's up and ready for you. So I need to insert these two activities. These are the ones we have not uh, demonstrated yet. So to do that, I'm going to click on these check boxes here. And then I'm going to click Insert Slides. All right. So I was on slide seven. I clicked Insert Slides. And now it's on slides eight and slides nine. Now, that was from the Mac uh, point of view. If you have the Poll Everywhere for PowerPoint for the Windows version, that integration installed, it's going to show up here on the ribbon for you. Um, and actually, I will say, to me, it seems very similar to Google Slides. So when we jump back over to Google Slides, I'll kind of show you what I mean. But basically, all you need to know is when you have an integration installed, just make sure you're logged into your correct Poll Everywhere account. It will populate up here for you. And when you click on it, it'll have several options there for you. All the same options that you'll have with the Mac app. Um, just going to look a little bit different, but don't worry. Like I said, we'll, we'll talk about it when we get over to Google Slides. Now, I am going to go ahead and present this before I go into presentation mode, though. Um, I do, and we've got a nice little reminder here for you. Um, but just very important to know, um, on any of the slides where an activity is inserted, just do not alter the speaker notes. It will mess with the functionality of the power, uh, excuse me, of the activity. Um, you can do it on any of your other slides, just not the ones that have activities inserted. So just very important to note, we've got that reminder for you there, too. Now, I talked about activating an activity. To activate an activity in PowerPoint, it's very simple. I'm going to just present this pre, um, present this like I normally would the, with the PowerPoint. So I clicked play from current slide. Now it's activated. Now, if I were um, going back and forth, and I'll show it, we're going to go to the next activity slide here in a little bit. Um, but this should be active. But basically, um, when I go into presentation mode in PowerPoint, this should be live. It should be already active. And actually, I'm just going to show you real quick. So I toggle with my arrow keys on my keyboard, I toggle over just like I normally would toggle to another slide. Now my activity is activated and it's ready to accept responses. So we do the work for you. It's automatic and that activity should now be activated. Perfect. This is our open-ended question. So what does audience engagement mean to you? And oh, and I also, um, while I'm waiting for those responses to come in, um, if you need your uh, presentation controls bar, just toggle your mouse just like you would on the web browser, and it comes up for you right down here. So it does not disappear. Don't worry. And same thing here with the, we got a lot of responses to the Q&A. Um, you'll see that as more responses are coming in, these are going down. They don't disappear into oblivion. Just scroll your mouse down, and um, they'll all be there for you. 
And you'll notice we've got the star view. So we have that spotlight view here too. It looks a little different on open-ended, uh, but if you wanted to talk about a certain answer, just click on that and um, you can kind of expand that view and make it a little bit bigger and easier for your participants to see. All right, perfect. I'm seeing um, that they provide feed input or feedback. Absolutely. Um, yeah, for PowerPoint presentations, that's definitely one of our most popular integrations. Um, and honestly, it's it's so it works so seamlessly. And what I love about it is you can really make your content look um, the way that you want it to and power and we will adjust to that. So we just went we're just there to help you boost the engagement. So <laughs> keeping my audience awake. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Perfect. Checking that they understand or are thinking. Absolutely. They're listening. Yes, they're involved and they feel like they have a, a voice in the room. You know, poll everywhere. We talk about engagement and boosting participation. But one thing I always like to mention with that poll everywhere, one huge benefit is it's very inclusive. Maybe there's somebody who wouldn't normally want to raise their hand or just wouldn't be comfortable. This gives them an opportunity to still be part of the group and still participate. Um, but just, yeah, make sure everybody's voice is heard. So, yeah, participation. Yeah, definitely. I'm just watching my time here. I want to make sure I got leave plenty of quite um room for you all for the Q and A. Um, I am going to go ahead and toggle over to our next slide. But thank you all so much for participating with this. Um, let's go ahead and do our favorite. So ranking, I'd love to know. Can you rank your favorite beverages? And I think I already mentioned it, but um, last last Wednesday was such a great day because it was the first day of uh, Starbucks bringing back the pumpkin beverages, which is just my favorite time of year. <laughs> I love, love, love the pumpkin, the pumpkin flavored things. And I and I broke down iced coffee and hot coffee into two different categories because I mean, let's be honest, at this point they are just their own, <laughs> their own categories. Um, per, so. Let's see. Um, let's see. We're seeing our different options being ranked. It looks like iced tea and coffee are uh, fighting each other for the lead there. Oh, I think iced coffee just got pushed down. Um, but so as you can see, as you all are going in and ranking these options, this is actor, um, actively showing us what's ranking first. So it looks like iced tea is winning right now. Um, now hot coffee. So love this activity type because this is great for reaching a consensus. These are great for brainstorming too. Maybe you've selected your topics that you want to focus on for the next quarter or, or for the next campaign. Now you just need to decide um, out of all those topics, maybe you got a lot and you need to decide which ones are the most important to the group. This is a great way to reach a group consensus. Um, and there's lots of fun options for this too. Like right here, I'm asking, <laughs> what's your favorite beverage? Maybe you could use this as an icebreaker if you want to just kind of get everybody um, warmed up and, and get them to use, start using poll everywhere. Perfect. And um, again, I can scroll down. All my options are here. And also want to make sure I mention again, you can email these out too. So these can be taken both synchronously and asynchronously. Perfect. Looks like hot coffee is winning. Yeah, I totally get that. Um, I know fall is here. Like I said, the pumpkin spice latte is back. So excited for it. Um, yeah, hopefully, uh, yeah, glad to see these options. But hopefully this is giving you all some great ideas for what you can do for your rankings. But perfect. All right. I think we probably got about all the responses we're going to get in. Like I said, I do want to make sure I leave plenty of time for that Q&A. So I'm going to jump out of my PowerPoint. I am going to switch back over to my Google Slides. Now, before I jump into... Um, the resource information and our Q&A. Um, I mentioned how if you're using PowerPoint and the Windows integration, it kind of looks similar to Google Slides, or at least it does in my mind. Um, it's going to pop up in that ribbon. So when you're on Google Slides and you have our Google Slides integration, it's going to pop up like this when you have it all installed and ready and you're logged in. It's going to pop up right here. You see Pull Everywhere, Insert Activities. So I can insert activities very similar to how I just did on PowerPoint. So just want to make sure I made a note of that because um, I know I'm not able to live demo the win the Windows view, but wanted to make sure I made a note of that because it, it looks very similar, at least in my mind. So let's jump in and let's talk about some of the resources we have available. So at Poll Everywhere, let's talk about our security. At Poll Everywhere, security is our top priority and we take it very seriously. So as you can see here, we have multiple security certifications. These certifications are based on rigorous international standards and they mark our continued commitment to information security at every level and ensure that the security of your data and information has been addressed, implemented, and properly controlled in all areas of our organizations. We are very proud of these different certifications and we take uh, your security and data privacy very seriously here. 
Let's talk about the support options we have. Uh, so I do want to cover some of these resources. If you go to polleverywhere.com slash support, we have a full extensive library of detailed support articles. It actually can break down each activity type we covered today and the activity types that I wasn't able to cover. Um, so highly recommend checking that resource out. It's got all kinds of guides and walkthroughs. Um, definitely check that out, polleverywhere.com slash support. Um, also want to talk really quickly about the variety of plans that we have available. Um, we have many different plans that are able that we can really make sure that they fit you and your organization's needs. Uh, if you're not sure what plan work, work, excuse me, would work best for you, um, our awesome sales staff is available to help walk you through and uh, kind of get a better understanding of what your use case is. So we've got all kinds of information there. Just go to polleverywhere.com slash plans, and you can also access the contact information for our sales team as well if you've got some additional questions about plans. I've talked a lot, a lot of different apps today. Um, so you've seen a couple, seen me demo a couple, but Pull Everywhere works where you work. So we have a number of integrations that are available to help you seamlessly engage with your participants. Some of these include WebEx, PowerPoint, Google Slides, Microsoft Teams, and our newly improved uh, Slack integration too. We just recently relaunched that. So lots of different options there. Go to polleverywhere.com slash apps to be able to download uh, the app that you're interested in. So we also have a polleverywhere.com slash webinars. We got a whole Poll Everywhere webinars library for you to view all the webinars on demand. Um, I will be sending out the recording of today's session with that follow-up email, uh, most likely going out tomorrow, um, but feel free to check out this library as well. I'm kind of jumping through fast because I want to make sure I leave plenty of time for this Q&A. So this was that pinned Q&A and I see we got some questions in. So let's go ahead and start diving down. So I say, can you please show a demo of the exporting options for an open-ended activity? Um, let me check my time here. Yeah, let me let me say, let me check real quick. I'll, I I don't know if I, I don't know if I can do a full full demo of that, but I can kind of show you like where to get started um, with exporting activities. Uh, so let's jump over to my I'll just jump into our open-ended that we created together. August 31st, uh, if I can remember which one, yeah, it's this one, uh, perfect. So um, to go ahead and um, share or download really the responses, you're just gonna click this, um, not dot share, excuse me. Um, it's actually gonna be in, uh, it's gonna be in reporting, I believe, and I apologize, it has been a little bit since I've exported from open-ended, um, but you do have this reports tab over here. So you can jump in here and you can actually go ahead and um, download all of your uh, reports and download your activity responses and get a full detailed report down there. Now, depending on your plan, we do have many different types of reports available, um, but that'll all be in your report section. I know that's not like a full demo. I do apologize. I wanna make sure I'm able to get to all the questions, um, but hopefully that helps give you a starting point. Um, that email that's gonna be coming from me with the recording, that is actually my email. It does not come from just some random robot. <laughs> I'm a real person. I do exist, I promise. Um, so if I didn't answer your question fully or if you have a follow-up question, feel free to respond to that email and I'm happy to help walk you through um, any use cases or answer any additional questions. Uh, so does Paul Everywhere work well with other presentation programs like Pro Presenter 7 or Resolume? So I'm not too familiar with these two. To be quite honest with you, um, we do, you know, our, our PowerPoint presentation, excuse me, our PowerPoint integration and Google Slides uh, integration are both very popular. Um, I, I don't know if I can answer that properly just because I'm, I'm not familiar with those two. So I do apologize, but um, I can definitely, that's that's interesting. Thanks for bringing that up though. I'll definitely look into that. Um, I'm not quite sure at the moment, but um, but yeah, thanks for thanks for bringing that up. Um, I'll definitely look into these. So yeah, apologize. I don't really have a clear answer for that one, but, um, but yeah, thanks, thanks for bringing that up. Um, do you have to install the Pull Everywhere app on every computer to use it in PowerPoint? That is a great question. Yes. So wherever, whichever computer you're planning on um, presenting from, you do need to make sure you have that Pull Everywhere app installed. And not only installed, just double check before you start your presentation, make sure you're logged into the correct account. Um, I know we have some uh, people who maybe work on different teams and maybe somebody's created activities on one account. Um, and they're sharing with it, just, just make sure you're logged into the correct account as well. But yes, that's a great question. Um, you do need to make sure you have the power the PowerPoint app installed for wherever, wherever you're going to be presenting from. Great question. Is there any way to use PowerPoint with Poll Everywhere without having to download the software on every computer? Um, so unfortunately, no. I mean, if you're you have whichever computer you're utilizing to um, PowerPoint and Poll Everywhere together, uh, you do need to have that integration installed. Um, so yeah, unfortunately, no, not at this time. Um, but that, that is a great question, though. This activity can use on Instagram and Facebook. Um, that's 
I'm not quite sure I understand the question. Um, we don't have any Instagram or Facebook integrations at the moment. Now you can share out links to surveys and different activities, um, but uh, not we don't have a direct in, um, integration with these two at the moment. But good, good question though. Uh, how does one present these polls in Google Sheets? Um, I don't know if you mean Google Sheets or Google Slides. Um, that's a great question though. Uh, so I'll just jump over there real quick. But when you have the uh, integration installed, it's just going to populate here. Again, make sure you're logged into the correct account and you're just going to insert your activities. Very similar to how it worked with PowerPoint. Um, but great question. And uh, again, if that poll, that polleverywhere.com slash support, um, we do have uh, lots of different guides and walkthroughs for all these as well. I'm just checking my time. I know we're almost at time here. So my biggest issue is projecting the activities on PowerPoint Live on Teams. I'm um, sorry to hear that you're having some issues. Um, definitely please feel free to reply to me in that um, follow-up email that you received from me um, or reach out to our support team as well. Um, we definitely want to make sure everything's working properly for you. So sorry to hear if you're having some issues, but um, we're happy to help however we can. Uh, like I said, feel free to reach out to either me when I email you or uh, reach out to our support team as, as well. They're happy to help. Um, let me see how many questions. I don't think I'm going to be able to get through all of the questions, unfortunately. I'm sorry. We are at time, and I want to make sure I'm respectful of y'all's time. Um, but uh, thank you all so much for, for participating today. Um, I do really, really appreciate um, y'all joining us today. Hopefully this help gave some uh, gave some uh, ideas for you and how you can what you can do with your own uh, polarware presentations. Um, again, I am I'm sorry. I wish I could have got through all these questions, but thank you all for so much. If if for whatever reason, if I did not answer your question and you really, you know, um, want to know, definitely please feel free to respond to me. Like I said, that is actually my email when you receive that follow-up email. Um, feel free to ask me in the email and I'm happy to help walk you through any solutions or um, use cases or anything like that. Um, also, do please feel free uh, or please fill out our survey so I can understand how, um, how I did. I love hearing your feedback. That feedback does not just disappear into oblivion. I do actually read that feedback and that's how I structure these sections. So, or these sessions. Um, so please, please uh, fill out that survey. Let me know how I did. Um, let me know if there's anything else you're looking for. Um, but with that, thank you all so much. That's all we have for you all today. Uh, thank you guys so, so much. I uh, really appreciate the participation. Uh, you all were an awesome group. Um, hope you all have a wonderful weekend and uh, take care. Thank you so much.